This is the seasonal stock and ETF report for today, November 8th, 2022, the election day. As we did last few days, let's again first take a look at S&P 500. For the next, this is what it's showing for next 30 days from today to next 30 days. This has been the performance in the last 10 years. But we want to take a look at it for more than that. Let's say, let's go for the last 60 year, days. So look at how S&P is done for the next 60 days from today. It has dropped in 2015, 2018, and 2021, an average on the uh, when it's gaining, it's gaining an average of 5.97 and it's been losing 7.24% on the losing years. How about until, uh, let's just go here. S&P common. Let's pick this 212-day opportunity. In for the 212-day opportunity, which ends at June 7th, it lost last year, but it won the last nine years. In the last 90 years, the state range has done quite well. It's done 71% of the time. It's been winning and it wins an average of 11.87% and loses an average of 9% for the other 29% of the years. Now we're going to use our election filtering. I am doing even years, that means those are election years, the presidential or midterm, could be either one. The gain has gone to 77%, right, let's go here, 77% of the years. It's been winning on election years, on non-election years, which are the odd years, It's been winning 64%. So there's definitely a bullish tendency to election years. And then let's look at midterm election years. It's won 87% of the years since 1930. Last time this date range has lost during midterm election years was 1946. And when it lost, it lost 2.9%. 15% in 1938 and 12.7% in 1930. Otherwise, this has been a very bullish period. Even in 2018, which markets dropped sharply, it gained 2.37%. 2014, 2%, 5%, and so on. The average has been 13.65%, so what is the highest one? The biggest winner was 25.39%. Pretty impressive. So it is bullish, however, as you can see, it is dropping. Hopefully that doesn't mean that the seasonality is ending, but it has been dropping. Let's go to Dow 30, the same corporates. United Healthcare is right on the top. Look at the 37 year date range. The date range is today until end of June, June 25th. It's made an average of 30.8%. Pretty impressive. Visa. Lost last year, but won all the other years. IBM lost in 2015, but made it in all the other years. We have 59 years of IBM. 
So this date range for IVM today until June tw- um until February twentieth. It's been winning seventy eight percent of the years. But what if we filter it by midterm election years? <coughs> it has won hundred percent of the years during this period of time for IBM. That includes nineteen sixty six. How has it done on non-election years? It's won 70% of the years. And on election years, it has won 86% of the years. And midterm election plus one. So midterm election plus one, it's won 73% of the years. So midterm election itself seems to be the most bullish time for IPM. Also, Merck. And so on. What's top on NASDAQ? It's still T-Mobile. T-Mobile does quite well from now till June 7th. Pfizer, 89 days, and it is 100% profitable last 10 years. top of the list on S&P 500 is Moody's still huge gainer last 10 years sharp ratio is quite high which means the returns have been high and consistent and it follows by Church and Dwight any difference in Russell Top of the list on Russell's is also Moody's, so is on Wilshire. Let's go to ETFs, not bonds. ETFs, top of the list is U.S. home construction. I would be kind of wary about it with interest rates rising, but it's gone up. But has it gone up since, let's find out, mid-October? I'm just changing the starting date to mid-October. And looking at this year, it's actually gone up 1.13%. Very interesting. Our first short is small cap iShares. Five days. Second short is high yield bond ETFs. And Australia iShares. Oh, that one's on the down path. Look at that. This should be fairly safe. Let's find out. Actually, it is not. It's just gone really big time. For a few years, but then it also won the other way. Not my favorite choice. All right, that's it for today.